Welcome to my fourth show me. This one is about solving a linear equation in x and y for y. This is going to become a very important skill throughout your mathematical career, especially if you need to use computers to do a lot of heavy calculation. Right now it will be valuable because in our study of lines, Equations in a certain form carry a lot of valuable information with them, information that helps us graph and predict the behavior of the numbers, which is, after all, the whole point of studying lines in the first place. The lines support the study of actual phenomena, and the only reason we study those things in science class is to see if we can make predictions and anticipate what's going to happen in the real world. Take a look at this equation. It's a linear equation. All the variables are to the first power. And it has two variables, x and y. We should be able to graph the points on this equation on the coordinate plane. Uh, all we have to do is find values of x and y that make this true. It's not exactly easy to do that with the equation in this form. It would be much, much easier if we had an equation where y equals something and a particular formula. If you watch my show me on graphing linear equations in two variables, you know that I like to make my graphs by finding three points. And I use a table like this one to do it. The x column is for the numbers that I'll put in, the inputs. And I like to choose a negative number, 0, and a positive number to put in. This space in the middle of the graph is reserved for whatever y happens to be. The idea is that we put in a value for x, we do some calculations in the middle, and get a result for y, which then gives us an ordered pair, negative 2 and whatever fits in that space. You can exactly do this with the kind of equation we were looking at just a moment ago. This equation doesn't support that method very well at all, but we can use some of our algebra skills to make it support that method. You see, this equation can be changed according to a set of rules without altering the points that will be on the equation. The basic rule is that whatever you do to one side of the equation on an arithmetic basis, you must also do to the other side. That way you maintain equality. After all, if these things aren't equal, we don't really have that much information to work with after all. How do we maintain equality? adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing the same things on both sides of the equation. But, of course, as a strategy to this, I want to end up with a statement that says y equals something. I don't want anything to be on the left side of that equal sign with the y. How do I accomplish that? And let's take a look at the situation y is starting out in. Looks like somebody came along and multiplied y by 2. And then, afterward, they or someone else added 8x. The multiplication was done first. The addition must have been done second. We know that because we have the order of operations rules firmly ensconced in our brains. Now, if they did those things in that order, and we want to undo them, we're going to have to undo them in the opposite order. So whatever was done last is going to get undone first. And whatever was done first is going to get undone last. So our strategy is first to subtract 8x from both sides, thereby undoing the addition. And then to divide both sides by 2, thereby undoing the multiplication. After all of that has been done, I think y is going to be by itself. And we'll have a formula we can use in my little table to find our graph. Let's implement that strategy. First. We subtract 8x, but if we do it to one side of the equal sign, we have to do it to the other side. So on the left side, the 8x's are gone. All we have left over there is 2y. On the right side, we have a bit of, a, of an issue with form. One of the little rules about equations like these is, about expressions like these, is that when one, one term has a variable and the other doesn't, the terms with more variables should be to the left, and the terms with less variables should be to the right. So that's what we're going to do. The value of that's the same as if we had negative 6 minus 8x. 
It doesn't really matter what order they're in in terms of the value. It's a, it's a question of form. Remember that we're part of the math club, and in math we have a culture to follow. We have sets of rules and expectations, just like any other group of people who are socially inclined. A lot of people would, would say that the math club isn't necessarily the most socially inclined group of people, but I would disagree. Anyway, now we need to get y by itself. And to do that, we have to unmultiply by 2, which means we have to divide by 2 on both sides. On the left side, that's easy enough. We've accomplished our goal. Y is now by itself. Of course, we also have to divide by 2 on the right side. Remember that division is like multiplication, so that when you divide, you have to divide each individual term by 2. Just as if you are multiplying, you have to multiply each term by 2 according to the distributive property. So, negative 8x divided by 2 is negative 4x. And negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Now we have an equation we can actually use in our table to generate some points and graph our equation. Let's do another one, and this time I haven't picked the numbers so that the result will look so neat. We're going to end up with some fractions when this is over, but more importantly, we're going to end up with a formula that we could use either when programming a computer or when calculating points for our graph of our line. The goal remains the same. It looks like somebody multiplied y by negative 3 and then added 5x. They did the multiplication first and the addition second, so we will undo the addition first and then undo the multiplication second. First then we need to subtract 5x from both sides. On the left side, the 5x's are gone. All we have is negative 3y. On the right side, we have negative 5x plus 7. Remember that the little rule of style in the math club is that the terms with more variables precede the terms with less variables. Now we need to divide everything by negative 3. This is where things get a little bit messy, especially if you're not comfortable with fractions. If that's the case, by the way, you need to correct that as soon as possible. Fractions are eminently useful, and they're almost always going to be present in your work regarding lines. So on the left side, negative 3 divided by negative 3 is positive 1. 1 times y is y. On the right side, of course, each individual term gets divided by negative 3. So negative 5 divided by negative 3 is positive 5 thirds. x is still there. And then 7 divided by negative 3 is negative 7 thirds. This is, in my opinion, the best way to write it because of other things we're going to be learning about lines in the future. There's a lot of valuable information contained in an equation written in this form, and uh, that'll be the subject of my next show me. For now, the most important thing to cultivate is the skill of getting a variable by itself. And the motivation to do that is actually going to be behind a lot of different activities throughout your pre-algebra and Algebra 1 courses. It's one of the most important skills you'll bring with you to more advanced classes. So to sum up, the world's going to present you with equations of various types in various forms. Your math books in particular, but also your experimentation and data collection may produce for you equations that look something like this. When this happens, you haven't got an ideal situation for doing calculations. You'd like to be in a situation where putting in a value for x yields a value for y. Doing it that way, you can either use the table approach I've outlined a couple of times already in my show me's, or you can use a computer, particularly a spreadsheet program, to quickly generate a host of data, which then are easy to graph and make your relationships between your two variables very clear. The goal is to have a formula where y is by itself on the left side and everything else is jumbled together on the right side. The organization of the information on the right side is important. Remember that the stuff with variables comes first and the things with, with less variables or no variables at all belongs to the right. If you organize things this way, there's a lot of valuable information contained in the equation, which we'll be talking about again in the next show me. 
Hope you found this one useful.